I want to talk to you about designing security systems where you move the perimeter detection outside. Designing systems this way will provide a solution that will allow your company to detect an intruder before an actual break-in occurs. With visual verification from Checked, this type of system allows you to provide a much higher level of security for your client. That higher level of security often warrants higher installation costs as well as higher monthly revenue for your company. Now, of course, there's things to consider when installing detectors outside, and we'll discuss many of those things in this video. Your primary concern when designing a system with exterior detection is twofold. First, detect an intruder, and secondly, minimize nuisance alarms. Every system you currently installed can be improved by including exterior detection and visual monitoring. It simply requires the proper site design. Designing a system that provides exterior detection while simultaneously not sending excessive false alarms into the central station is not difficult, but some considerations must be made when designing these systems. Here are some important things to consider when designing a visually monitored security system with outdoor detection. When we think of exterior detection, we generally think about covering the outer perimeter. With visual verification, think more about designing exterior spot detection, of course with cameras overlooking the detector. This will allow an operator to understand exactly what happened when the detector tripped. You may be asking yourself, when designing a system with outdoor detection, what type of sensors do I use? Don't worry. In this and other videos, we will discuss detectors in detail. Optex has every outdoor detector imaginable, from photo beams and laser detection to passive infrared detectors from 30 to 300 feet. They not only have long range detectors, but also wide pattern as well. They have curtain detection that will only alarm when someone gets right up next to the building. All of these devices are designed to detect and provide the industry's best false alarm immunity. These products allow you to design a system specifically for your client while also minimizing the possibility of false alarms. Let's discuss a few principles when designing systems with exterior detection. First, Always, always, always put yourself in the operator's shoes. An operator must be able to quickly and accurately assess what happens at the site when an alarm occurs. Always ask yourself what will be presented to the operator when this detector trips. Secondly, the closer the detection pattern is to the building, the less nuisance alarms will occur. Optex curtain detectors, the BX shield, and the FitLink detectors are perfect for these applications. Think about creating an exterior infrared barrier close to the wall. People can walk by the area without tripping the alarm, but when someone gets close to the building, an alarm will occur. Third, this is the most important thing to remember. You're pairing a detector with a camera. The camera overlooking the detector must see the device's entire detection pattern. Always position the camera in a place where when the detector is activated, the operator can see what caused the alarm to occur. Don't cut corners in this part of your design. A good example would be, do not mount a set of photo beams at 32 inches off the ground and then mount a camera 12 feet above the beam. This will allow someone to trip the beam while walking directly under the camera and outside of its field of view. Fourth, does the property have a perimeter fence or natural barrier that may prevent people or animals from roaming freely through the protected area? Obviously, you don't want to install a visually monitored security system where there's a likelihood a large amount of activity will occur after the alarm system's armed. When designing systems outdoors, ask yourself, how much activity is going to happen after hours? Things like a perimeter fence provide a natural barrier minimizing the possibility of unwanted alarms. Sixth, if you're installing photo beams, make sure the camera can see the entire beam pattern. 
Viewing photo beams in a visually monitored environment longer than 200 feet is not recommended. If you're providing visual monitoring for photo beams that may exceed these distances or intrusion devices that are far away, two things become very important, lighting and the camera's field of view. In these cases, assess the property's lighting and also use a verifocal camera designed for low light conditions. Seventh, like with any installation, make sure you choose the proper detector for the area. For example, don't use a long range motion detector that will detect people or vehicles that are outside the secured area. Eighth, lighting. Is there adequate lighting during the nighttime hours? If not, consider proposing starlight or low light cameras to ensure the operator can accurately determine if a person is present when an alarm occurs. Lastly, in the checked portal, cameras can be used to provide an operator with better situational awareness. A detector does not have to be paired with every camera. Consider using additional cameras that allow an operator to see things that surround the protected area, like a front parking lot where they can determine a vehicle's make and model, or the opposite side of a building. This allows them to see the entire perimeter of a property. This information provides an operator with a complete understanding of what is occurring at the property. It also allows them to confidently communicate what they see to both end users and law enforcement. I hope this video helps you visualize how to design systems with exterior detection and visual monitoring. Thanks for watching.